Welcome to Kluji Tech Time. I'm David, and uh, this right here is Ken from Original Dobo. Welcome, Ken. Hey, thanks for having me, man. So you uh, are the lucky guest number two on this uh, new kind of series that I'm I'm hoping to keep rolling with called Daily Droning With, and uh, uh, trying to find uh, different people to talk to, learn a little bit more about them, and uh, talk about whatever's going on in the industry at the time. So this is uh, Daily Droning with Original Dobo. Cool. Thanks for having <laughs> me on, second guest. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So uh, so. I don't know if you got a chance to to watch the uh, uh, first episode of this, which was with Russ from Fifty One Drones. Great dude. He's awesome. I know you interact with uh, with Russ a lot, but one of the first things I talked a little bit about with him was in terms of privacy as a YouTuber. And uh, you know, when I when I think of Russ, I kind of think a little bit of you know that he, he seems to put up a little bit of a wall in terms of right. how much information he's putting out there. And when I think of you, I think of kind of a little bit on the opposite end of the spectrum in terms of, of that and, and maybe a few other things we'll talk about here in a second. Sure. But, <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, so I mean, wh where do you kind of stand in terms of privacy and, and what information you're putting out there? And I know maybe at one point you've had a little bit of, uh, uh, you know, some, some problems maybe with, with some of that. Yeah. So, I mean, at, at first, you know, the whole alias original Dobo really stemmed from a nickname as a kid. Um, you know, it's like my, my nickname was Dobo. And then I just added original to that because I was the first of three sons. So, but um, I started with that. And, you know, for all my videos, like when I first started on YouTube, nobody ever actually saw me. I was holding okay. a phone. I started out doing like tech reviews, like obviously everybody who got in, involved in this uh, sphere and drones weren't even a thing back then. Yeah. And um, for all yeah, my videos, like nobody saw me. That was like eight years ago, right? I, yeah. I went out getting kind of ready for this. I went out and checked out your your YouTube channel. And yeah, you got videos from eight years ago, right? Yeah, yeah. So, and you know, I never really took it serious. Um, so like videos were like really sporadic. They were off and on. Like I would go on stints where I would upload like maybe every three months, sometimes every six months. I think there was a point where I went as long as a year before uploading. Um, but as far as privacy goes, I really don't hide anything. I sort of just let it all hang out there. Um, for the most I, part, I kind of feel like that. That's just you, right? With that's everything just you do, you yeah. just, you just let it hanging out there, right? Yeah. Like my job knows like what I do and they, they know this is like a passion of mine. So they're totally cool with it. And I think they just sort of roll the punches because how I am here online is, is exactly how I am in the workplace. All of my training sessions with all of my clients are always the same way. So they just know, I guess I'm a loose cannon. <laughs> so, yeah. So, so, uh, have you had some problems with that kind of, uh, uh, you know, biting you a little bit or causing um, you some, some problems? Yeah. I mean, yes and no. I mean, I haven't had anybody show up to my house. Well, not on, not on purpose, actually. <laughs> um, not on purpose, but yeah, I mean, I've had like some issues where like people figured out what I did for work or something like that. And they were trying to cause problems. I mean, we quickly shut that down, but um, you know, beyond that, I mean, there's always going to be somebody that doesn't like you. Right. Um, oh, yeah. and you know, stuff can, can happen. Uh, they'll try. I've never been swatted. So I guess that's a good thing, but I don't live stream very often. So, but yeah, yeah. yeah. My biggest fear would be like, you know, address getting out there or something like vandal right. vandalizing or something. I think that's my biggest fear. You know, as the channel starts growing, you, you develop more hate. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. Yeah. So. I, uh, I, I might have got a little bit of that with uh, with that Scottio video that I, that yeah. I posted. <laughs> <laughs> you did, dude. You definitely did. I, I try and avoid, uh, or actually I try and read almost pretty much every single comment sure. that comes through on my channel. I'm still small enough I can do that. And I, I try and respond to most of them, but uh, I, I pretty much love that one, uh, le that one where it was. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I had a feeling that that was going to be a rough go as soon as it went live. As soon as I saw it, I was like, Oh man, this is gonna this is gonna be good because like the comments are always good and you always have two sides of the fence. Um, yeah, so it's always interesting to see. I mean, any videos like that lately, I just I joke around with comment sections. I just call them dumpster fires. Yeah, uh, that was that's that was one are. of the things I was gonna ask you about was exactly that. So I, you know, uh, of course we we uh, communicate quite a bit yeah. on on YouTube or on uh, Twitter and uh, comment back and forth and uh, you know you. You, you you comment or you you share some of those occasionally, don't you? 
Yeah, I do. I do. I like <laughs> I like burning them. You know, my, here's my philosophy with with YouTube comments just in general. There's there's two ways you can go with it, right? You can take the high road, right? And you, you can say nothing at all or be like, you know, thanks for your comment. Or or you can just let them know how you feel. Um, and, and that's unfortunately, that's how that's how I do it. I was always taught like, you know, if, if you can dish it out, you should be able to take it. Absolutely. So that's that's my philosophy. That's what my mom always taught me anyways. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. So so how so you talked about starting in the tech space. Uh, it looked like when I kind of scrolled through the the your channel it started out with phones and stuff yeah. like that. And uh, uh, you did some uh, like uh, the Apple Watch and things like that. How did you kind of transition from that into drones? So, you know, what happened was like I always had a passion for tech and I would use YouTube as an excuse um, to buy things like my my wife would ask me, well, what are you doing? I'm like, that's ah, for YouTube. It's for YouTube. My channel was never big enough to even <laughs> really, really use that excuse. So uh, it, I think it was like one Christmas. Uh, you know, you know, I think how we all really stumbled across is, you know, you see something online and I think I saw something from Casey Neistat or something. You know, everybody wants to be like Casey. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, I remember I wanted a drone, but I didn't know if I wanted an expensive drone. I bought like a pair of Bebop or something like that. You know, and I lost it a couple of times, wrecked it, destroyed it, whatever. Um, but it was that drone that I was sort of like, wow, this is this is cool. I never made a video on it, I don't think. Maybe I made a couple of videos with it. But um, then my second was was it was a Parrot Breeze. That was the very first review I ever did on a drone was a Parrot. Or, no, it was Unique Breeze. So I did own a Unique drone at one point. Oh, wow. Okay. So Unique Breeze. And um, it was that. That was the drone. That You're really one of the few it. unique owners I've ever met. I I, I, don't I know. know that I've met <laughs> very many owners of. I give them drones. I give them a lot of crap, but um, it was a terrible drone. The first drone I bricked it. <laughs> I remember I was filming in 4K, transferring files back to the computer, and it just bricked. And I had to nice. send it in for repair. So, um, but yeah, that that sort of sparked it, and then I went from that to a, a DJI uh, Phantom Three standard, and then to the Autel X Star. Um, and from there, gosh, I don't even remember what I went with next. I think I got a Phantom 4 Pro after that point. So I've had I kicked around quite a few drones, but I never really took it serious. I don't think I started taking drone in serious until probably December of 2017. Okay. That's when I really took it serious. Yeah. And I think I, I think the first time that I was really kind of inter introduced to you was probably with the Autel Evo. Right. Uh, I think I think you were one of the ones that uh, finagled your way into into getting your hands on it pretty soon. I uh, I somehow be, have before... a good talent for that. <laughs> and uh, I I think a lot of people were probably introduced to you that way. Yeah, I think I think that's when a lot of people started like taking note of the channel. Um, I I had my heart set on getting that drone from the moment I saw it from the first CES. Um, that was what was that? That was 2018, I believe. Uh, yeah, I think it was, it would have I was been January 2018. 2018. Yep. So, um, yeah, 2018, that's, that's when I started first noticing, um, the paradigm shifting towards drones for, for myself, for my channel. Um, and then I just, you know, I, it used to be phones, drones, tech, and then I dropped it and I just went back to, okay, it's just original Dobo. Um, and just, we just did drones. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. So you did change your channel to, yeah. to that to that name at some point. Yeah, I did change the channel to okay. that name at some point. Um, you know, before that, it was, you know, I don't even know. You know, I wish there was like a, a warning when you create a YouTube channel. Like <laughs> it's like, please be mindful of the email you use. That's going to be your name, you know. <laughs> yeah. So, so, I mean, I could change it to a brand account, but, you know, I guess there's always that fear is like what, what happens if you do that? You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I've actually looked into that quite a bit myself and uh yeah, it, it, from everything I've read it's pretty scary like there's like a button that has like all kinds of warning text on it where it's basically yeah. saying uh you could be deleting everything, so be careful. <laughs> yeah, I just I just said, you know what? I I'm just going to leave it alone. It's not really that important. People people know who I am. They find the channel for that, so I don't I guess it doesn't really matter what email I initially signed up with, but yeah. I've had it for so long now at this point. Yeah. So then, as uh, kind of as you've of you've gotten into doing drones and so on, you've you've kind of uh, as as being a YouTuber, you've kind of developed some some interesting relationships, I think, in in the industry and with other YouTubers and stuff. 
um, you know, in terms of uh, one of the companies you work with, and yeah. then uh, and then you know you, you seem like you've got a pretty close relationship with Billy, and, and of course other people. But you know, how how have those uh, relationships really kind of influenced you know what you do and how you do things? And um, and it, it influences it a lot. I mean, you know, when I first met Billy, um, you know how I met him. I met him from a, a mutual acquaintance on Twitter, and um, we were running a group. That's, that's what it was. We were, we were running a group. And then when I got the Evo in hands, um, he said, well, I was going to take it. He, he took a trip down to Florida cause he didn't get the Evo at the time. Um, and he's like, you know, let's, let's go out we'll fly whatever. So he flew down to Florida and that was the very first time I met him like in person. And, uh, we just hit it off really well. We got along great. And then from that point it spooled up, like, you know, I was flying up there, he was flying and we were just flying back and forth, hanging out, uh, which is sort of cool. Cause you know, at any other time in life, you could never do this before. Like you didn't meet people from other states or, you know what I mean? Yeah, very much so. So, um, it was just a cool thing. Um, I met him, um, and then I started doing some work with, um, with drone works. Um, that's one of the companies that, that I work with pretty, pretty closely and became, you know, really good friends with Zach, the owner. Um, and that, that whole deal transpired was, you know, I, I was sort of, I guess, pissed with Carolina drones. You know, at the time, I felt like we, we, we shipped them quite a bit of pre-orders for the Evo. Um, and they never really said anything else to it. You know, nobody knew. I paid for all that. Like, everything I paid for. Even though you get it early, you paid for it. Um, so, ended up, you know, going to work with DroneWorks. Uh, presented him with a business plan of how I could help their business. Uh, and I sort of just started doing things pro bono. And, you know, one thing led to another and things started taking off and he uh, took me out to CES last year. Uh, we went back this year. Now he's um, he's moved the business down here to Florida. Got a warehouse now. So yeah, cool. things are, things are moving, moving in a good direction, I guess. Yeah. Awesome. So speaking of, uh, of CES, what was, what, what was your highlight? And if it's not the helicopter and machine guns, um, then, uh, then, then I don't even know what to damn. talk about. Yeah. I don't know. Well, you know, <laughs> it, that was definitely the highlight that for me, definitely, <laughs> You know, when they presented me the idea, you know, and it, I don't even know how it all came came to be. So, you know, I remember first things first, I remember sitting on the plane, you know, had this long flight. I flew in the day of CES started and I remember touching down in Vegas and getting a flurry of messages from people saying, oh, my God, did you see that, you know, Aldrin got the Evo 2? And I open up YouTube and I see like this, you know, spool of like, you know how it is every time there's a new release. Like, oh, yeah, of course. And I'm like, and the first words out of my mouth was, you know, I'm like, <laughs> crap. I'm like that. That didn't work out because that we were supposed to get our hands on one at CES, which we right. did. We did. But it was a convoluted way about about getting it in our hands to begin with. Um, so that but the hel helicopter ride was definitely the highlight. Um, the X dynamics dinner was probably the second, the second closest thing. Um, so they had like, a, an after hours event, um, where a bunch of the people that got a chance to see the evolve one were out for dinner with the entire team. And it basically consisted of, uh, Billy, myself and Sherman from, uh, Roswell flight crew. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. So, which was cool to finally meet him because I used to watch all of his videos as I was starting out, you know, and he's just a cool guy. Yeah, that's cool. You know, the only time I've ever seen any of his videos are from CES. Uh, I think I saw some of his vid videos the last couple of years from CES, but I'm not sure that I've seen seen much else from him. Yeah, he he they do um they do a lot of events stuff. Um, I don't know if necessarily they get many drones in their hands. Um, and I I think his team is sort of shrunk because he used to have like three other guys working with them, but um, he seemed like a nice enough guy, and it was it, you know it was a neat dinner. Um, to hang out with all those guys. There's a gentleman called uh, Airwolf, goes by the name of uh, Wolfgang. Um, he's a professional pilot that yep. I, I've followed for a long time, and he's followed me for a while. And uh, it was cool to finally get a chance to meet him. So that that would probably be like the third thing was finally getting a chance to you know shake his hand and you know talk to him was pretty cool. There was a lot of there was a lot of stuff at CES this year. This was a good CES to be into drones. 
Yeah, I felt like last year going there really wasn't a, no. a, a whole lot, but uh, I was really bummed that I wasn't able to, to make it work for this year because because of all the new technology that, that was really coming in the drone space. So in terms of in terms of what what you did see there, you know, whether it was and, and let me ask you this, I mean, before you know, maybe it's not drones, but just what what was the coolest thing overall that you saw while you're at C- CES? <sighs> Hmm. Let's think. Gosh, man, I saw so much stuff. Um, I did really focus heavily on the drones, but there was some times where I did get a chance um, to to get out and walk around. And, and I would probably say the coolest thing that I got a chance to really see that wasn't a drone was probably the um, the new virtual reality. Uh, it was like the DD virtual virtual reality uh, that they had. It was like an immersive virtual uh, game. It was it was sort of crazy. Um, I don't, I don't know what would really top that. Maybe the Insta one R was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, you know, it was weird. It was like sort of a hodgepodge of, of stuff this year. Like there was no rhyme or reason to the way things were laid out. Like last year you knew that all the ROVs and all the drones were here. You know what I mean? South hall was where it was at this year. I felt like things were all over the place. Like I was finding drones, like in the sands convention center. Oh wow! Which was which was sort of strange. Like you don't yeah. normally see that. That's usually home automation stuff. Yeah. Um. But yeah, there was drones there. There was like this air selfie drone, which I know it sounds pretty lame at first when you think about it, but it was actually pretty cool. The tech they've got going into these drones. Yeah. Cool. So then, what was uh? I mean, what, what's your what's your thoughts on the the Autel and the 8K? I mean, is the 8K really it's, really worth the 8K or so? From my first experience with it and, and playing around with the files, I would say yes, yes. Um, firstly, the the resolution when you downsample it to 4K is phenomenally sharp. It is crazy sharp. I can't even, the video does no justice. If you have a 4K TV, I would highly advise watching that video on a 4K TV because it's just incredible. Yeah. Um, it's not much harder to work with. You don't need a supercomputer to to use it. I I use proxies, and if you're a okay. if you're a Mac user, you can just load it into Final Cut Pro and it just tears through it like a beast. It just handled like a champ, huh? Like like it was nothing. I, well, I'll say I'll take it back. It was it handled it like Premiere Pro handles 4K footage. Like so, there was some yeah. stutters here and there, but still, yeah. for not working with proxies, it just cut right through it. Yeah, I think uh, I mean it's only 120 megabits per second, right? Right, right. So, so I guess that's one of my concerns, right? Because 8K, although it only sounds like it's double as big, it's actually four times as big because four times you as big. double not only the width but you double the height as well. So you can basically fit four images, Correct. four 4K images there, and we're and it's only I think 120 megabits versus like the the Mavic 2 Pro and Mavic 2 Zoom. I didn't notice any yeah. banded or anything. You know, like sometimes with bit rates, when you get less information, you'll yeah. get banded. I didn't notice anything like that. Yeah. Um, it does shoot 10 bit, so that's a good thing. You can choose between H.265 and H.264. I shot that yeah. in H.264. Um, color science was I I thought the color science they nailed pretty pretty darn good. Like I felt like it was really natural and it sort of to me looked a lot like uh the black magic um color science i mean that's what i compare it to either that or like an re color science very soft um colors sort of almost pastel like i I think it looked good yeah and i think i think the the evos colors were always really good as well so it doesn't surprise me that they that they've got got the most out of the uh the cameras they're putting for the evo too yeah, um, they changed the focal lengths on the lenses this year. So they're 26 millimeters versus the the 90 degree, 100 and you know 110 degree field of view that they had previous. The really wide focal length. Right. Um, they wanted something a little bit more dramatic, so they went to 26, which I think I think it looks better. So it's a little bit narrow f- field of view. A little bit narrower field of view. And it's actually a little bit narrower than that of even the um, the Mavics. Okay. Just by just by two millimeters, but I, I think it makes yeah. everything look a lot more dramatic. Yeah, very cool, very cool. I can't wait to uh, check out the uh, the Evo Two Pro, of course, with the one yeah. inch sensor, the six K, and uh, looking and, looking like a beast. Yeah, the and the the aperture, right? Uh, being able yeah. to adjust the aperture. Yeah, it's gonna it's you're gonna be able to adjust the aperture. It's it's gonna have the same shutter as 
the uh, Mavic 2. So it's not going to be a global shutter. So it's not we're not yeah. going to be dealing with mechanical shutters. But yeah. um, matter of fact, the 2018 CES was when the first time I heard 6K out of Autel's mouth. And, you know, the whole year I've been sitting here waiting for this because I heard 6K, you know, from one of the meetings we had. You yeah. know, we knew it was coming. And the fact that they're delivering on it so well is is really incredible. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. And uh, I have to say, I, I'm not sure that I expected I expected them to come out, uh, you know, with something really good. But before we saw the FCC leaks, uh, I I didn't I didn't I don't think that many people expected 6K or 8K. I think everybody I think was so. just looking at. 4k and you know 60 4k 60 and maybe you know trying to push that up and you know improving it in in other ways the flight dynamics and the gimbal and those sorts of things but i don't i don't think anybody was thinking 6k or 8k yeah de definitely not I, I don't think anybody even gave a thought to the fact that there was going to be such a a jump in resolution like this but they they did it and they i think they did it really well you know, they looked at all the weaknesses they had before uh, and they improved on it. The only the only thing I can say that they really skimped on is the controller. There, yeah. was, there was supposed to be a new controller, I thought, but apparently it wasn't ready in time. So I don't know if it's going to be sold as an add on or what the deal is, but that's the only downfall. Yeah, I think that's a, a lot of people have the same opinion on that. Uh, the Evo controller, is, it's it's okay. Yeah. I mean, it's it's nice having that little three-inch screen, but the screen is honestly too small to really do anything real practical with. And then the the uh, the, the antenna, of course, a lot of people have had problems with the antenna on the original Evo. Yeah, so I asked him about that because that was my concern, like immediately when I saw the old controller. And it was the person who does the repairs um, was there. He handles like all the repairs for Evo or our Altel. And he basically said what they had was on the earlier versions of the Evo. They had a tolerance issue on the antennas. So they corrected the tolerance issue. So that shouldn't be a problem anymore, uh, according to him. So. We'll see if yeah, that's I hope the case. So. I hope so. I think a lot, a lot of people have, have complained saying, and and you know, it's the internet, right? So right. we got a lot of uh, internet uh, experts that you know, just saying that the, the the type of plastic they used for the antennas and stuff is, is maybe not the best thing. Yeah, it definitely uh, wasn't. But uh, uh, so DJI, you know, going into CES, really the Phantom Four Pro is kind of their their newest thing, their yeah. newest thing, right? So uh, I have a theory with with them with that, and I, I feel like I feel like they're just sort of hanging back right now with this remote ID deal. You know, I think they want to see which yeah. way this is going to go. Yeah, I don't know. I think um, I think. I think they probably just weren't ready for the Mavic 3. I know Drone DJ and some people were, were forecasting, you know, Mavic 3 at the end of January and stuff. I didn't really ever think that was that was likely. I think that uh, uh, they're just not ready for that. And I honestly think that uh, with the Skydio coming out and the um, and the, the Autel Evo 2 coming out, I think they kind of had to go back to the drawing board maybe a little bit and say, hey, how can how can we be able to compete with these offerings a little bit more? What do you think about that? Uh, I, th I think you're probably right. I, so a couple of things. I don't think they anticipated the demand for the Skydio to be as great as it is. Um, and then the well, obstacle. They're not avoids. the only ones. Skydio didn't expect that either. <laughs> well, no. Yeah, well, exactly. Well, they should have. That was a little naive of them, to be honest. Um, yeah. But um, yeah, so the Skydio obstacle avoidance is just obviously sort of next level in certain situations. Um, and then, you know, you've got the Evo that just dropped and it's just like sort of like, whoa, you just loaded up this drone that you can fold, throw it in your bag. I mean, they sort of shut down, you know, they they out Mavic the Mavic, if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, the Mavic 2 Pro, the Mavic 2. I mean, they, they increased pretty much everything about it. You know, and then you got that, you know, DJI has released this, um, you know, the Phantom uh, 4 2.0. And for me, you know, the the Evolve, I would buy the Evolve over that now at this point. Just after getting my hands on with it and seeing everything that they included, you know, it's not, you know, it's twice as expensive, but yeah. you're getting twice as much for that your micro money. For thir that micro four thirds camera. Crazy. That's. Four. That's what I was. I was so excited about the Evolve last year when I saw it at CES uh, in January 2019, 
And it, it, it wasn't just because of the, you know, what the, I mean, it's one of the sexiest sure, drones, of course, out there. But uh, the promise of that Micro Four Thirds and the fact that they're now hopefully going to come through with that, with the Evolve 2, and, uh, you know, it looks like it's real and maybe not a prototype at this point. And so, oh, yeah, it's, it's so, definitely, definitely real. Um, look in May. May is what they're looking at. Uh, yeah. ProRes, uh, 4K, 120 frames per second. I mean, it's 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 shaping up to be a beast. And I think I think the thing that will sit well with a lot of people who purchased the Evolve 1 is the fact that you can trade that Evolve 1 in uh, and pay $1,000 and upgrade to yeah. the Evolve 2, which I think is a steal. Oh, that's an absolute steal. Absolutely, yeah. So that's going to be cool. Uh, I got the uh, – I, I had a uh, an Evolve – I don't know if I lean to the side there, you can actually see it. Yeah, yeah, I see it back there behind me. And um, I, uh, uh, so they sent it to me for review, and I, I just, I had nothing but problems with it, and I just decided instead of doing like some of you guys did and just you know saying it's you know what it really is, I just decided I, I wasn't gonna. I wasn't going to put anything out there. On I, it. I felt like, you know, like I tried to take sort of like a, a neutral stance on it, like not really bash it, but not really condone it. You know what I mean? Um, yep. I took I took a neutral stance because it, it needed to be said. And I think of it like this. If we didn't say the things we said, we wouldn't see the evolve too. Yeah, and I, I, I communicated that stuff back to them to, you know, I, what, what it was. But I... It's one of those things that, uh, and I look back on it, and I probably should have dealt with it differently. Sure. Um, and it'll probably cost me the opportunity to get an involved to 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 review. Um, hopefully not. But I don't. Uh, I don't think it. I don't think it would. They they seemingly love the small creator. They they like <laughs> they like guys like us because we just you know we we connect with our audiences different. I asked them. I asked them that question yeah. while we we're at dinner, and basically they said no. We we like you guys. That's what they want. Yeah, I just, uh, I, I'm just thinking that that since I didn't end up putting anything out there, I'm probably they probably won't want to send send anything to um, me again. But but it was uh, kind of calculated know. risk. It's one of those things that that uh, especially at the time there was there's no real DJI competition, sure. and I didn't want to do my part in uh, trying to stifle that competition and 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 so on so i didn't want to put out negativity out there against them but i'm super excited for the evolve too i think that you know what i'm seeing on paper and what they've talked about and showed so far has me super excited about it i think they they've they've taken that feedback we've all given them and they've they've made it something usable i mean the the camera that came with evolve one just i mean it was it was an also ran right i mean yeah it, just, it was it, it was, it was okay. nothing <laughs> for, for the big drone the huge drone and uh you know the cost and it's just a you know it's a one over 2.3 inch right. sensor and whatever but now with the micro four thirds that changes that the uh the signal strength before you know it was it was at only one kilometer before um, you know, which 11 means kilometers usable now. distance is, is, yeah. And now with, uh, for the 11 kilometers, I think you have to use the, the external, uh, antenna yeah. or whatever. Yeah. They, they, and they'll provide you two of the, um, I guess they're paddle antennas yeah. or you can buy your, or you can buy your own, which, you know what, that's a genius move on their part oh, to, absolutely. To, make, to make an, you know, a can, a controller like that. And then also add it with the add-ons. The other thing that they did was they sort of industrialized the antenna this year. Which, okay. which I feel, or the controller, they industrialized it. It's not so. I felt like you know what it reminded me of last year, like an alien computer, like <laughs> yeah. you know from Dell or something. That's what it yeah. reminded me of. So it was yeah. cool to see that they 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 really did listen, and it gives me hope that companies will continue to follow in those footsteps and make yeah. you know the correct changes for the end user. Yeah, and I like the idea of the controller that they had for the for the Evolve One, but I think they fix, like you said, in terms of the the build of it and so on. One of the thing, one of my problems with the Evolve One was that the screens were were pretty bright, but they were so glossy I could right. just never see anything. It's all I matte finish the, the, now. The, yeah, matte finish now. So they've really kind of listened to all those little things all of us have kind of fed back to them. And, uh, and I've really taken it to another level. So I'm, I'm super excited to see what they can do with that. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited for it. And I look forward to May. You know, it was a fun time last year. So, like, it, they sent them out, I think, just before May, before they were supposed to ship. So 
I think it'd be cool to see. I'm, I'm excited to fly that one. I mean, I, I just still feel like, you know, with DJI, it was just sort of a, a weird year. There was nothing new at their booth. And uh, yeah. the Mavic Mini was oddly the star of their show. It was, yeah. So well, sort of it was weird. the star of their year. It was really the oh, only yeah. drone that they had the entire year. I mean, I mean, they put out the the Osmo Action and Pocket, uh, which are great little products. Sure. But in terms of drones, the Mini was the only thing they released all year. I I think you know if they want to be, make another drone like ne- like now, they can put out the Mini Pro now. I would buy it. <laughs> I mean, it's such a portable drone. You know, I've talked about that in terms of. You know what the mini is the 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 device itself the physical properties of the device are really good i would like a little bit stronger motors to to fight a little bit more wind but otherwise it's a great platform all my complaints about complaints about it are software related issues and you know if they would be willing uh, like you said a, a, a mini pro right add those additional software features and charge a little bit more for it, man, they'd, they'd be selling those like hotcakes, man, faster than they already are. For Sure. I think I've given up, you know, sort of complaining about the things that I don't think they're going to fix on it. Yeah. You know, like ugh, they're not going to add any more features to it. It's it's, I think it's capped at what it is. We're not going to see manual video modes. I'm almost certain that there will be a successor to that, to that mini, there will be a mini pro. Yeah. Yeah, I hope so. And and kind of in that vein, uh, I don't know if you saw the tweet that I put out today, but uh, I got word from some distributors that, that DJI is telling them they're not making any more Mavic Airs. Ooh. Hmm. So, I mean, who knows if that's... They, uh, they needed to know. get rid of the Air, though, if you think about it. To true up to true up their, their, their lineup, to simplify the consumer side, Mavic Mini, Mavic 2, Zoom, Mavic 2 Pro. I mean, it just makes more sense. Mavic Air, it's like, where does that really slot in, you know? Yeah, it's 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 pretty close in there. And, and in terms of the size, their their lineup was right now, especially their small drones with where they were with the Spark, where they came in with the, the Mini and right. where the Air was. They, they just have this like weird like matrix of features that this one has this, this one has this. It's not like clear on, on all the features. It just didn't make much sense. And, you know, the fact is if they are going to bring a Mavic 3 at any, at any one point, it's just best to have the lineup you know, sort of cleaned up, I guess. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I still like personally, I still think that they're playing it smart waiting because something I asked every single manufacturer while I was at CES was how do you guys plan on handling this remote identification? And nobody could give me a clear cut answer. Like, you know, what what they have thought about or if they've given it any thought because they knew this was coming. They knew this was coming at yep. some point. Um, and as of right now, you know, the only thing they could say was they would be behind their customers that purchase drones and would assist any way possible, depending on which way this goes. But that's the problem yeah. is nobody knows. But I don't think it's going to get very far, to be honest with you. What do you mean? Not very um, far? the remote identification. I don't think it's you gonna, don't think it's I don't think it's going it, to pass the way the way they want it to. I almost almost certain it will not pass the way they want it to. The way that uh, the, the industry wants it or the way the FAA, wants the, it? the way that the FAA wants it. Yeah, it's pretty tough the the way that it is. It's uh, that the, it's, the network network it, piece. They don't it have is. the infrastructure in place to do this. Um, you know, they don't have the approvals. You know, there there's just a lot. You know, a lot really going against it. You know, I, I never understood it when I when I first read it. I was thinking to myself the more and more I think about it, and the more I spend time on planes, is like, you know, wait a second. We have thousands of cars on the road, and we yeah. and we all coincide with UPS trucks, mail trucks, FedEx trucks, right? I don't need to know. They don't need to know where I'm at. If I'm driving on the road, nobody knows where I'm driving, you know, and you can easily yep. put a car through a, a restaurant storefront or whatever. Nobody has to know what I'm doing. Why? Yep. Wh- I never understood why they needed to know where we were at. I, I think it should be the other way around. I want to know where FedEx is at. I want to know where UPS is at. You know, I think, <laughs> yeah. I think you want to do remote identification. Fine. Tell us where they are at so we can avoid them. Shouldn't be the yeah, other way around. I, I think I think honestly, a lot of it is coming from the the national security uh, advisors and that kind of stuff. In terms of you know, they hey they want they want to know where everybody's yeah, at, right? You know, but, and that's the thing they have kill switch. They have all these drone prevention, anti drone, you know, cannons and what have you. I mean, it doesn't take much to take down a drone that's entering an airspace that that it shouldn't be. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I just think I just think you know, 
as of late, there's just regulations on top of regulations when, when there doesn't have to be. There has never been an accident either with a drone. Yeah, I still say it's a solution looking for a problem because at this point, it's there's just there isn't a problem. There just hasn't been a big problem, right? I mean, there hasn't. How many how many deaths? How many accidents? How many you know all this stuff? And and they don't outline any of the details of what the real risks are and why this is all necessary. Now, I do understand the idea behind having remote ID. I don't believe in the way that they're proposing it. I mean, DJI has been doing remote ID for for years with right. their Aeroscope and that that whole system. Um, you know, so it can be done in in a way that that I think they can know where people are, are at. That's not obtrusive, not uh, you know, not privacy issues, and uh, doesn't cost a ton of money. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And I, I think you know the the sad part about this hobby is the fact that we, there's nobody lobbying for the hobbyists. You know. You know the. Yep. You know, you have uh, what is it, the AMA club? You know, but they, you know, th that's really yeah. the only structure that we have in this RC world. Yeah. And people pay countless, you know, was it one hundred and twenty five dollars a year, right? Something like that. Yeah. So, so with that one hundred and twenty five dollars a year that people pay to the AMA, what do they get out of that besides being able to fly at you know remote fields? Like, what do they get out of that? They're not doing yeah, anything to help the hobby. And that's that's the big problem in terms of the AMA. That's all they care about is their little their little fields. Right, right? exactly. It, 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 in terms of what their their purview is, I mean, that's all all they they really are. We don't have any anybody lobbying for us, you know, the same way like Amazon yeah. and UPS. They're they're going to bat in Washington for what they want with this whole deal. And you know, I yep. I just think I think there could be a happy medium, but I really think it's not going to get. I think the F I don't think the FAA is ignorant to the fact that people see there's a problem with this. I just can't believe that they're that oblivious. No, I think I think I, I, yeah, I absolutely agree. Absolutely. And I, agree. And I think so. I think you know ultimately you know if they really think about it, you get five dollars a pop per registration, right? You know, you get one hundred and fifty dollars for every remote, you know, one hundred seven pilot, and there's a hell of a lot of us out there. They would be shooting themselves in the foot on on additional revenue sources. I mean, who knows what obviously Amazon and them are going to pay? I'm sure it's you know billions compared to the millions they make from us, but still, <laughs> yeah. you know. Well, Amazon will have more drones just just themselves than everybody else combined. Oh, right? for for sure, for sure, a hundred percent, hundred percent. I mean, you know, but but that's the thing though. But do do does people really want that too? Do yeah. do people want the skies littered with delivery drones? I don't. No, I don't. And and I mean, how often do when you're just out and about doing your normal normal life, how how many times have you actually seen a drone when you're just in your normal life? Maybe, you know, there's been a couple of times I've seen a drone and I get excited when I see one. You know, I'm like <laughs> Me too. it's like it's like seeing a shooting star or something because like <laughs> yeah. I don't have my controller and I'm like and sometimes I'll go following it like to see if I can find the pilot. Just, just because it's, you know, it's, it's, it's sort of cool. You know, it's, it's, it's always, to me, it's cool when I see one and I'm not flying. Like, I'm like, yeah. I'm like, ah, I know what that is, you know? Uh, but, you know, I don't want to look up in the sky and just see like countless, you know, swarms of drones flying to deliver or what I, I just, that's not the world I want to live in. No. Oh, I agree. You know, I agree for sure. Yeah. I'm the same way. If I've seen more, probably probably about a, a handful or, or less than a dozen times I've probably seen a drone just while I'm out doing my, my everyday life. Right. It's, there's it rarely ever happens. So it's sort of weird though. Anyways. It's weird. Yeah. Well, I know you're, you're a busy man, so I'll, I'll let you get back to your family and work. Appreciate and it, I'm man. sure you're, I'm sure you got uh, uh, other, other stuff coming up, but uh, bef just one last question I asked yeah. Russ this the other day as well. So What's when you're just chilling out at night, you don't you know, you're not doing anything. What uh, what, what what's your drink of choice? Drink of choice is uh, gin and grapefruit. Gin and grapefruit. Gin and grapefruit, okay. man. Yeah. I'm a gin. Tangeray and grapefruit is is my drink of choice. Yeah. Nice. What about you? Uh, so I, I've never been much of a, much of a, I don't drink a whole lot of alcohol, you know, when I'm out and about, or, you know, out with some friends, I'll have a beer here and there. But uh, uh, I used to be drinking I, I used to drink insane amount of soda and you know look at me it's uh, it, it probably shows but uh, for the last three months uh just water only really so, yep wow just water only i used to, i used to Try be that way i used to be like really really super healthy but i feel like 
the past year and a half, I just <laughs> really, really, really took a tumble. Yeah, well, not not as hard of a tumble as I've taken. <laughs> I don't know. It's been pretty bad. <laughs> so, I'm trying to get so, back there. Yeah, I'm trying to get back on it. So, so uh, yeah. So, what do you what do you got coming up uh, um, next for you? Actually, right now, I am I am uh, I'm sort of taking a breather from from drones for for a moment. I'm I'm working on some videos for some lenses. Uh, company just sent me a 50 millimeter anamorphic lens for Sony. So. I've been, oh, yeah, I've been working on that, trying to get back into some camera gear, um, some real estate tutorials and stuff like that. Um, you know, being traveling the past couple of weeks, like I just literally just got home today from Palm Beach. Um, I was literally home for 24 hours and then back on the road coming from Vegas. So, um, nice. you know, traveling a lot. I'm trying to put more emphasis on on the real estate stuff this year, trying to make a bigger dent. You know, now that I understand it a little bit more this year, just try to do that more you know, try to amplify it for 2020. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So I, I, I was wanting to talk a little bit about your, your real estate business, but I think, uh, I think maybe we'll save that for another time. Yeah. Maybe, uh, maybe I can talk you into join us again sometime. In the yeah, like, I'm we'll digging the form a little bit more digging the format, man. Yeah. I appreciate it. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. It's, uh, uh, I've talked with you a couple, you know, we, we met out in Las Vegas last year. Yeah, we went we, flying, uh, man. We talked a few times. Yeah. We had a good time. That was a that good, was, that, that was, was really that was a good time. It was sort of, I was sort of bummed, man, that you weren't going to be out there. Cause I was like, cause I wanted to go fly. I brought an Evo with me and I was like, you know what? I'm like, nobody, nobody was around on the last day. And I'm like, I don't want to go out there by myself. It's, it's, you know, yeah. I don't know anybody. And if I get lost or something, I'm screwed. Yeah. So cool. Yeah, I'd, I'd I'd love to get out there again next year. Ho- hopefully, we can make that happen. But uh, tell you, we all need to get together and get just like a big Airbnb, man. Oh, I love it. It's a good idea. That'd be man. a good idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So thanks for joining us, and uh, yeah, I guess we'll uh, uh, see you sometime soon. If you guys aren't already subscribed to Ken, definitely go check out his channel. I'll leave a link somewhere somewhere around for you to go check that out. Hit him up, subscribe him. Uh, he's got all kinds of cool content. Uh, so check him out. So thanks for joining us, Ken. Appreciate, Appreciate for having it. me, man. Thanks. All right, cool. Get out and go fly it, everybody. Hope to see you on another one soon. Ciao. See ya.